Question 54, it says solve the following system of, uh, of equations. I almost said linear equations, which would be wrong because this system is not a linear system. And first, when you look at this, when first when I looked at that question, I was wondering what this question is doing in the, in this, in the linear algebra course. But then actually, very nice, I mean, the question itself suggests a very nice approach using system of linear equations. I wonder if you can figure out what the approach will be. We need to solve the system of linear equations. The system itself is not linear, so you cannot, you cannot use Gaussian eliminations, detail Kramer's rule, or anything like that. And yet, question appears in this section, which can go well, in a topic which is called linear algebra. I think it's a good demonstration of this idea, which I, well, which I was trying to present a few times. It's very important to be able to change point of views. Uh, you see what they suggest? They suggest this. Let's just think of number z as not, no, we're no longer, we're no longer gonna think of z as unknown. We can think of it as a just parameter. So, just like a number which comes from outside. If you think of this z like so, then the system becomes linear with respect to x and y. Two unknowns, two equa three equations. And so, if you, imagine you have a solution. You have a triple of numbers, x, y, z, which makes this all of these three equations numerically correct. Then, thinking of, z, of this z as a parameter, as just a scalar involving here, you will have x, y, pair of numbers, which is a solution to two equations, sorry, three equations with two unknowns. And then you can, because such, such systems, they know not always have solutions, right? It's not always true that every system of three equations with two unknowns has a solution. You can use your Gaussian elimination to test whether this system like this will, will have a solution. Look at this. I'm going to extract the augmented matrix treating z as a scalar parameter. Here's my augmented matrix. Given that, well, I started this year, I said, let's just assume we have a solution. Given that we have a pair of numbers x and y which solve the system, it means that this matrix must fit the requirement of being like this uh, augmented matrix of the solvable system. I mean, if you take this matrix to the row echelon form, there shouldn't be any pivot on the right-hand side. And that is your condition to find those z's which may be part of the solution. Let me just say it again. Rep just changing the way I treat my number z into the parameter rather than unknown, I change my view from the free, uh, free equations with three unknowns to free equations, free linear equations with two unknowns. Such a combination not always has a solution. And that's why I can use the Gaussian elimination or say determinant method in order to see whether, in order to see whether I can, whether my, like, for which z's my augmented matrix will not have pivot on the right hand side. So the next step, I mean, because it's a, it's, a, it's a question which sits under the determinants, I'm going to use, rather than Gaussian elimination, I'm going to use the determinants. If this matrix doesn't have all the pivots, remember, determinants, if you take a matrix to the row echelon form, determinants will be the product of all of the pivots. If my last column doesn't have a pivot, it, will, it means that the last element here, after you take it to the row echelon form, will be zero, meaning that the determinant of this matrix will be zero as well. Here's my test. Rather than taking this to the row echelon form and finding the condition on z which ensures zero here in this position, I need this zero here in order for, the, for this matrix to be solvable. I do it differently. I'll compute the determinant and I will equate the determinant to zero. That will give me the condition on z which will make my matrix solvable. Two ideas here, I think rel relatively new to you right now. First one, we change our approach to z into the parameter and convert it immediately by doing so, we convert my system into the system of linear equations. Second one is rather than now I need to make sure that my system is solvable depending on the parameter, this sort of tasks we did together. We, I, remember, I, I remember clearly we did this sort of task uh, when we had a matrix with the parameter and there was a question for which values of the parameter the system has one solution, multiple solutions, no solutions. This sort of questions we did. And we did those questions via Gaussian elimination method. Here is another way to do it. 
Because if you just imagine you did this Gaussian elimination and you look at the, all of these pivots, your test will be the last pivot should be zero, which in the determinant language means the determinant is zero. Determinant is a product of pivots. So here we go. Here's my determinant of my matrix now. All I need to do, I just, like it was suggested from the back row, I simply have to, how did you say it? How did you put it? I have to, I have to solve it straight away. Yeah, that's what I have to do. Well, I will probably do some row operations before I will solve it straight away because I think it will make the, the solution a little bit shorter or a little bit easier. In fact, I will do, it's the first time I do this, I will do column reductions. When we did Gaussian elimination, we only did row operations, but because determinant is independent of transposition, every row operation can be converted into the column operation, at least when it comes to the computing of determinants. So this time I will do column reduction. If I do column reduction, which uh, the one which I chose, you see, I take the second one from the first one, here's the result of this reduction, and I put the equal sign, because column reduction, as much as the row reduction, doesn't change the determinant. Here's my common factor, z take one, so it's my first factor in my factorization, z take one. What do I do with this? I think I did, I did, I suggested, uh, I suggested doing another row reduction. R1 plus R, uh, R2, which will vanish this element. So if I do another row reduction, that is the result of this reduction. And now we can compute my determinant straight away, because if I put my cross here, on this one, and I use a column decomposition, then I will have to multiply this one by this smaller minor. In fact, this factor is missing here. Oh, let's just put it here. Z take one times. Here's the final computation. Z plus one times Z plus one, and take five. It's not a complete factorization, but we, we all know how to factorize the quadratic polynomial like this. In fact, rather than factorizing that, we can just see the roots straight away. The roots will be plus minus root 5, take 1. And here's my possible values for z. Let's just trace the logic again. We started from the assumption that we have a triple of numbers x, y, z, which solves the system. But then changing our approach to z, we said it means that the z is such a parameter, just z, such a parameter, which will make this augmented matrix solvable. Then when the next step, step was that solvable matrix means the determinant in zero is zero, and here's the possibilities for z. So if we imagine we have a triple of numbers such that we have a solution here, this last number z can possibly take only three values. One, one, two, and three. We can, we can rule out this one straight away, actually, because if you put one across this matrix, if you put one back into this matrix, it will be columns of ones, columns of ones, two, three, two. So effectively, we didn't reach this stage where we, have a, where we don't have a pivot on the right-hand side, isn't it? Because all ones here, all ones here, if I just do one extra row reduction in this matrix, I'm not going to do it, but if I do it here in my head, if I take this first row and subtract from this row and from subtract from this row, all of all of the entries here will be zero. Because all ones, column of all ones. And by doing so, I will not vanish all of this element because here will be three, here will be two. So after doing so, I will end up with the pivot on the right hand side. So this one, if I use this statistical language, is, is this is the outlier. It's not really the number which makes my matrix solvable. So for, for, for this value, we don't have a pair of x and y, which will make the system solvable. For these two, well, I no longer can do the analysis for these two from the top of my head. I have to do some writing. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take these numbers, z, I mean the first number z, I'm going to put it across my system, and I'm going to solve it for x and for y. Yeah. 
is the first equation, is the second equation, is the last equation. And this testing will be solvable. Yeah. Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you, saying that I solved it by hand. I actually I just clicked a few buttons, and the, the solution came up. Uh, but on the other hand, probably by hand doing, is solving even this system, it shouldn't be that hard. Probably you, you, you could you could choose only two equations, for instance, last two, and do some ad hoc combinations. But anyway, the numbers which I come up with were two these two numbers, and I double checked them. Oh, but you have you you have to always double check, even if you're absolutely sure that your solution is correct. And if you double check them, and I double check them, that will be the solution for this free. And that's why if you put this z next to these two well next to these two values, that will be a solution to this system. For this one number, again, if you sub in the z into your system, this will be your system of three equations with two unknowns, and we know this system is solvable because there's no pivot on the right-hand side. So you can choose any two and solve them for x and y. Is the solution for this two. And I double-checked this as well, as far as I remember, yesterday. <laughs> 